at least have taken all our money. Oh, but a few dollars. I guess he left that there, so there wouldn't be any questions about closing the account. We saved for so long. Won't be able to have the wedding down here now. If the Hamiltons are paying, they'll want it up there for sure. Angela and Rob will be disappointed. Angela said she wanted the sort of wedding we could give her. Not all the fuss and nonsense her mother would want. Well, she's going to have the wedding she wants. I'm damned if they're going to have it up there. But how? Oh, I don't know how. Look, I work my guts out. I'll, I'll mortgage the place. I don't know. But we're going to do it. early in the day to take up that offer of a drink, isn't it? Business visit. Sounds ominous. <laughs> Not really. How's about letting me sell you a car? Oh, you don't beat around the bush, do you? <laughs> don't. Oh, no point, really. You have to be in the market with all the money you came into, and I can offer you the best deal in town, so I think we could do each other some good. Only one problem. Bought one already. Mm-mm. I've never owned a car in my life. <laughs> Too many taxi drivers depend on me. Never heard a bloke trying. If you can put any business my way... Mm -hmm. I'll see what I can do. Good on you. I want to buy Angie the best engagement ring in town, so I need all the cash I can lay my hands on. And directions to a good jeweller. Well, Wayne told me the address of his mother's. They should be OK. Oh, <laughs> I hope he told you to take your wallet with you, too. <laughs> now you know why I'm hustling so hard. In case you change your mind, Oh, you're a persistent little devil, aren't you? <laughs> I won't keep you. I've got to get back to work. I don't suppose I could interest you in a coffee? Some other time, eh? <laughs> uh, I imagine Patricia is planning a fancy wedding. She doesn't know we're engaged yet. We're saving it as a nice surprise for when she comes back from holidays. Oh, I can't say she'll be too pleased. Too bad. Uh, what sort of a wedding are you planning? El Cheapo special. Oh, it has to be. The Hamiltons are stony. So we're having it in Melbourne. David's paying. But what about the money Patricia inherited? From what I've heard, it doesn't amount to much. <laughs> David'll be OK. Angie doesn't want a big do. I'll take you up on that offer of a drink sometime. Oh, don't feel obliged. I'd understand the way the Hamiltons are towards me. I wouldn't know about any of that. I'll be in touch. Remember, if you need a car, I'm your man. Confirms my theory. Patricia hasn't admitted how much she got. Why would she lie? Search me. Well, I think it's terrible. I mean, she could have saved Woomba if she'd paid Mr. Hamilton's debts. I know. Somebody ought to tell him. Uh-uh. Coming from me, it'd only sound like another try at getting back to them. Oh, maybe it's better if they sort out their own mess. <laughs> I can't believe, Rob. Huh. Trying to flog you a car. <laughs> Top marks for initiative. I couldn't tell him I'd done most of my money already. Still keeping it a secret? I'll be able to explain after tomorrow night. You'll understand why then. Well, it's your business. I should have sent Rob over to see you. Well, you could do with a replacement for your little old v dub Oh, I can't afford a new car yet. <laughs> no harm in looking. Never know what you might say. Why not? <laughs> give yourself indigestion. I don't want to be late. I want Bates get in a bad mood. He's just as likely not to give me those extra trips. I'll tell you one thing you'll be doing before you go. Yeah? Calling Angela. She'll be wondering what's happened to you. Not a sad eye. Now. She'll think you're not happy about the wedding if you don't. Well, you've told her it's fine. She'll want to hear it from you. Okay, as soon as I'm finished. 
Do you think we should tell the kids about Noel taking money? Not much they can do, and it'll make Susie just feel even worse. Mm, she feels lousy for sticking up for him. She should know no one blames her. Still, that's the way it is. Now, I reckon we'll just keep it to ourselves. Agreed. We'll do enough worrying for the lot of them. This car was found upside down with seven teenagers inside. Why? I'm with you. We'll manage. Both feel a bit terrible, but really. <coughs> That's for me. Time to ring Mumbai later. Really must go. Okay. Bye, love. Come on, Rosie. See you in a couple of days. Bye. Hello? What's all this I hear about you getting engaged? Oh, I was wondering when you were going to call. Are you pleased? As long as you're happy. You better believe it. How come it took you so long? Thought I'd give you a chance to calm down. Are you sure you don't mind paying for the wedding? Mind? No way. <laughs> Bates has put me on a special roster to help with the money. Well, I don't expect anything fancy. You only get married once. Don't go working too hard, though. You leave that up to me. Might as well do things properly. <laughs> you reckon Rob's extravagant? He'll have to start pulling his horns in now. Oh, he has. He's working really hard, making stacks of money. Enough to spring for two tickets to Melbourne? We'll have to talk about it as soon as possible. Well, I'll ask him. I'll get him to draw the money out of his bank account. He's never had a bank account in his life. <laughs> I'll get him to show you the book when we get there. Well, well, what do you know? Beryl told me he'd settle down when he found the right girl. I guess I'll just have to believe her now. I don't know why you're being so stubborn. I'm sick of worrying about money, that's why. I'll get another job. I can't live on air till you do. Well, manage. I want some extra money for a change. Look, I'm working there four hours a day as it is. A few more won't hurt. Four more? That's twice as long. It was good of them to offer. You never keep it up. I'll be fine. Really. Yeah, OK. It's up to you. I can do it if you help round here. Oh, a great husband I am. Only good for helping in the house. It's nothing to be ashamed of. OK, just don't tell Nelson or I'll kill you. Move over. I'm always finished. Come on, go to bed. You've got to be up early tomorrow, remember? I'm just trying to make things easier on us. <laughs> Look, I know, and I think it's terrific. But I don't want you pushing yourself too hard. I can handle it. Just you wait and see. Something else, Mrs. Burns? I'm just tossing up. Will it have a jam roll or one of your fruit cakes? Which is the freshest? They're all freshly made this morning. Hmm. Give me a jam roll then. I am in rather a hurry, dear. That'll be two dollars eighty pence. No, well, then watch your prices, my girl, or you'll be scaring the customers off. There you go, dear. Don't you start. Kevin's convinced I'm going to fall in a heap any minute. Oh, you've done a great job. Had plenty of time. Had the house to myself. It's me, Beryl. Oh, I'm not in the mood for Dad today. Come on in, Victor. Just say hello and dip off. I'm sorry to barge in. Well, I saw you walking past just now. She could hardly put one foot in front of the other. You're not taking proper care of yourself, are you? Yes, I am, Dad. Are you seeing the doctor regularly? Yes. She's tired, Victor. There's nothing to worry about. That's well, a matter of opinion. I think it's about time you gave up a job. We need the money. Well, you ought to be able to manage on what Kevin earns. Well, we can't, so let's just drop it, OK? Well, all you have to do is make out a budget and stick to it. You'll manage. Look, I'll help you. Beryl, have you got a pen and a piece of paper? Now, how much does Kevin earn? I think you'd better tell him, love. 
Kevin's been put off. So I'm working full time until we can get on our feet again. I might have known. I could tell there was something wrong. Oh, calm down, Victor. She's perfectly all right. She's on her last legs. That son of yours ought to be shot for sending her out to work while he loafs. He's got school, Dad. And he's trying to find another job. I'll bet. Come on, I'll give you a lift home. Do not adjust your television set. Have we got... I teed it up on the way over. The owner's a friend of mine. You can start straight away. Great, eh? You just about make enough for tram fares. Well, it mightn't pay much, but it's a start. I think he should wait until he can find something with decent money, Dad. Right. <laughs> so much for all your promises to support, Lynn. What do you think I've been doing? I'm talking about now. It's none of your business. She's my daughter. She's my wife. Would you two stop arguing? If there's nothing to worry about, Dad, I'm fine. I don't see how you can be going out to work all day, then coming home to cook and clean and... Kevin does all the cooking and the cleaning. I'll bet he does. He does. Not that it's any of your business. I doubt you could even boil water. Smell that. That's a stew I'm cooking for tea tonight. Lynn needs good, wholesome food, not the sort of stuff you're likely to throw together. He's doing a good job. Oh, I'm sure. He is. Why don't you ring Mum? Ask her to come over for dinner tonight. He can show you what a good job he really is doing. Right. Right. The day you can cook a decent stew, I'll eat my hat. You and Lynn make a good pair. You'll both end up working yourselves into the ground. Got tons of time between shifts. Rubbish. You'll end up falling asleep at the wheel if you try and stick to this roster for too long. Oh, come on, Bill. You know I'm right. I remember when Bob Adams had that accident because he was trying to push himself too hard. I'll be careful. That's all very well. What happens when you're held up on the road and you cut down on your brakes to keep up with the schedule? I've never bent the rules and I'm not going to start now. Look, all I want to do is make a quid to give Angela a decent wedding. You don't have to kill yourself to do it. She doesn't want a big wedding. I'll give her the best I can manage. Now I can have my dinner. I've got to be at the depot in an hour. You are as stubborn as a mule, David Palmer. Mm, smells very nice, doesn't it, Victor? The proof's in the tasting. Well, there you go, Mr. Hardy. Bit watery. Oh, I'd like to see you make such a good effort on your first try. I think you owe Kevin an apology, Dad. Hmm. Yeah, well, maybe I did talk a bit out of turn. And not that I take back what I said about the job. Now, you could earn a bit of extra money while you're looking around for something better. We're leaving things as they are. Now, see here, Kevin, Victor, you can't... it's their decision. I... I suppose it is a bit watery. Oh, as long as you've got plenty of bread to mop it up. But Lynn shouldn't be filling herself up with starchy bread. Well, where's the goodness in that? There's nothing wrong with bread, Victor. I should cut some more, I suppose. Uh, uh, uh. You rest. Come on, dear. You give me a hand. We don't need my help to cut a few slices of bread. Victor, you dish up. We won't be long. <clears throat> I think Mum's going to let him have it for being picky. <laughs> He's a pain in the neck. At least he cares about you. Don't you start siding with him. It's right about the extra money. It would help. Yeah, but you'd have to get up at five o'clock every morning. I can hack it. You'd never keep it up. It's too long a day. I've heard that somewhere before. <laughs> I bet you'd peg out before I would. <laughs> you want a bet? <laughs> now, here we go. <laughs> this should do us. Um, didn't you have something to do, dear? Yes, um, do you mind if I use your phone? I'll, uh, have to call Alf and tell him you won't be doing the paper round. Actually, uh, we talked it over and decided what you said makes sense. I'll do the job until I can find something better. You see, Muriel? He always has to have the last word. But don't you let him bully you into doing that paper round if you don't want to. Look, I want to get into journalism. At least it's a start. <laughs> You're a marvel, Rob. How did you sort it all out so quickly? Trade secret. <laughs> I've parked a little bus outside. I've had the workshop give it a thorough going over. If you have any troubles, I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it through your paces tomorrow. Yeah. I can run you down to Wombai now. You're going down to sort things out with Mr Hamilton? I'm... I'm going to try. Good on you. Might uh, help smooth things over with Angie if you patched it up with him. Easier said than done. Hmm? As long as you're trying. 
Uh, how are things with the engagement ring? Had a great day today. Can pick it up tomorrow. Oh, and you'll be wrapped. Yeah. I've been making excuses for the last couple of days why we can't go looking for one. Didn't <laughs> want to spoil the surprise. I'm sure she'll love it. Yeah, she better with what it's costing. Anyway, I'll catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> OK, bye. Bye. And thanks again. My pleasure. See ya. He's a hustler. <laughs> But you can't help liking oh, him. Oh, no. Oh, sorry I put my foot in it about Woombai. Oh, it was partly the truth. Mm. I am going down to apologise to Gordon. And drop your bombshell. I almost fell through the floor when he told me. Yeah, I know. I just hope Gordon will swallow his pride and make the best of it. I'm dreading it. Jamie Dury has blown Australia away. But are the judges being... His first? Oh, don't be stupid. Come on. Okay, Duke, can I pick him or can I pick him? Must have cost a fortune. Plenty more where that came from. Well, put it on, go on. But why'd you buy something like that? Don't you like it? Of course I do, but, but what did it cost? Two thousand bucks. Oh, what a waste. Well, throwing that much money away when we need it for other things. I wanted you to have a nice one. I don't give a damn about jewellery. Well, it's a bit late telling me now. Anyway, you should have let me pick it. I wanted it to be a surprise. Yes, yeah, some surprise. Yeah, well, it's done now, eh? So just shut up about it and put it on. No, I don't want it. Oh, come on, Angie. I can't take it back. Yes, you can. It's your engagement ring. Huh? Do what you like with it. Chuck it out for all I care. Just packed the dinner service your mother gave you and marked it fragile. Good. That little scrap heap? Not on your life. You can't make decent soup without this. Rubbish. All right. Give it here. Looks bare, doesn't it? Yep. You shouldn't have come. I could have managed. It's my place to be here to hand over. Still can't believe it, you know. Have to make the best of it, Rosie. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll put this on the hall stand. Don't want to forget it when we leave. You don't have to worry. There are some things I can't bear to leave either. Two of a kind, aren't we? Yeah. That'll be the new owner. I'll uh, go and let him in. Better clear a path to the door. You'll never guess who's just turned up. Fiona Thompson. I'd better go in by myself. It's not going to be very pleasant. Oh, no. Oh, you're a great help. Oh, good luck. No worries. I've been thrown out of better places than this before. I don't think we have anything to say to each other. It's important. I want to apologize. I made a terrible mistake and I'm very sorry. It's a bit late in the day for that. Do you mind if we talk inside? I'd rather you just lift. It's more than an apology, Gordon. We have a lot to discuss. I can't imagine what. I bought Wombai. I'm the new owner. Love is very strange. It can come and go. It can 
It's addictive. There are no limits and it's as easy as putting things on a list. The more you can list, the more you can win. Join me, Andrew O'Keefe, and play along at home. The Rich List, 7.30 tonight on 7. For your chance to see the worldwide premiere trailer for the upcoming blockbuster movie Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at World's End, be watching Dancing with the Stars, 7.30 tomorrow night on 7. Next, our new series, Food for Life. Bye.